I serve as co-chair of the Health Committee of the Arizona-Mexico Commission. It's really interesting because I started um, as a student. I was doing my, my master's in epidemiology and I became involved with the Health Committee. It just made all the sense in the world. Although it was Health Services Committee, my impression was that it was mostly physicians you know, conversing about the business of, of medicine. But when I started to getting involved, it was more, more public health oriented. Uh, and so that really piqued my interest. And so I became involved when um, he was um, the co-chair at that time, Dr. Andy Nichols. And Dr. Andy Nichols was a professor at the University of Arizona in Family and Community Medicine, but he was also the private co-chair for the health committee. And this is, this is back, in, back in the 90s, late 90s. And so he was a very inspirational uh, individual and I became quickly involved in some of the initiatives through the Arizona Mexico Commission. Something that most people don't experience, unless you live in border communities, unless you're part of a border state, and everybody knows, well, at least I hope everybody knows, that there are four border states with Mexico. From the west to the east, it's California, Arizona, New Mexico, and Texas. And then on the, on the Mexican side, which is northern Mexico, there are six states. The uniqueness about the Arizona-Sonora region is that we have been, up until maybe a few years ago, we were the only um, binational uh, uh, commission that existed between uh, Arizona and Sonora. Maybe um, five, six years back, New Mexico has approached Sonora to establish something similar. But up until you know, just a few years ago, um, it, this is a very unique uh, region where you have these committees of stakeholders, you know, the group of people that work on both sides of the border that have found common ground to work together to resolve all sorts of challenges that affect both sides. And so it just makes all the sense in the world to do that if you're in this type of a situation like California is and New Mexico and Texas. Um, you can say the same thing about the northern border of the U.S. as well with Canada. Um, but anywhere else in the world, this doesn't exist except here. We've done a lot of things over the years um, in terms of finding those common issues that we can work on um, and ways to, to resolve or to, to sort of adjust certain whatever they may be, policies that are in place. This is very much related to universities. So the corridor between Arizona and Puerto Peñasco, Rocky Point. I can recall that being such a big issue with students um, and the security and safety of students especially, but other tourists who were traveling from Arizona to uh, Puerto Peñasco, which is a beach town. It's a, it's a very popular place where Many students, especially during spring break, will, you know, they'll, they'll travel there. Uh, but you also have a lot of tourists from not just Arizona, but California as well. And so we were able to work together with, uh, with, our, with our counterparts in Sonora to set up a safety quarter. And so we literally, to inaugurate this, this event, literally had um, the Secretary of Health and the Director of Health at the time, I'm, I'm sort of spacing on who that was at the time. Um, but we set up sort of a, um, an area where they had to stop, where the tourist that was going south had to stop and pick up literature. And we would do this quick, quick and dirty education on the do's and the don'ts, right? And especially with students. Um, and so then they'd go on their way. And so that was sort of kind of memorable because we had all these very important people in government that were out for that day to inaugurate that week. Uh, and so that continues to this day, uh, but in different, in different ways. That was pretty memorable. I've also had many students, that have, many students in public health that have worked with us on these issues, that have become their internships. And that's always very memorable because the students have these epiphanies uh, about, wow, I didn't really know that we had these relationships with, with another country. You know, they, we take it for granted that you know, our state borders another country and another, another state within a country. And so it's that in and of itself is, you know, it's memorable because 
you know, we take that for granted. And it's a very fluid population. We go there just as often as they come here. Well, even before, even before working with and through the Arizona Mexico Commission, I was already working with the state of Sonora and other, other communities in Mexico. Using the framework of the Arizona Mexico Commission and the history and the, the relationship that has actually been fostered over many, many years, 60 years uh, this year. You know, it gives you that, it provides that framework, but it also provides that umbrella under which these issues that you want to address are taken seriously, right? Because you have the, wh whomever is in the leadership, whomever is the governor at the time, regardless of the party, it's, it's, about, it's about the issues at hand and the issues that you wish to address. And I think, that's, I think that's the most important part of working with and through the Arizona Mexico Commission is that you have this support. It may not be financial support, but it's that moral support, it's that political will that's so key in trying to address specific situations and challenges that are, that are actually at hand. Whoever is, is in, in the governorship really dictates um, how the Arizona Mexico Commission will 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 address the relationship um, over time and over that term because in in the U.S. and in Arizona specifically you have you know you're as governor you you can do two terms which is you know eight years in Mexico it's a one term six year one term and so it's it's interesting it it all depends on on that leadership and so. During this administration, um, the relationship is, is actually become stronger and um, there is much more participation from both sides. But it's most notable on the Arizona side. And so when we go to these, these annual or biannual uh, meetings, you see many more uh, people from all walks of life and all sorts of professions attending the Arizona Mexico Commission. I mean, literally, you have nowhere to sit. And that's always a pleasure, right, to, to be able to go to a, to a meeting where there's so much uh, commitment. And, um, and, the, and just to watch people interact with the folks from Sonora, um, on a, not just on a professional basis, but I mean, they become long-lasting friends. They may, you know, end up in some other position uh, but they always come back and they can always find those, those friends that, that they met at that first Arizona-Mexico Commission meeting.